Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And mercy and blessings from Allah be upon you. My name is Ayham Sakhni, Senior Researcher in the Conflict Resolution and Humanitarian Aid Center. Welcome to the general lecture delivered by Mr. Hassan, His Excellency Muhammad Saad Hassan, Muallim Mahmoud Sheikh Ali, Minister of Justice and Constitutional Affairs. He will talk about Al Jumuriya al Somali, about the Third Somalia Republic building the new state, the experience of the Third Somali Republic. In the beginning, uh, please allow me to uh, introduce about the center. It is, it is a research and studies center, and it is an independent uh, established in 2016, offers academic. Uh, different disciplines and academic about the conflict resolutions, uh, uh, causes, resolutions, and the uh, fragile states supporting the, the culture of knowledge. We have organized many events in regard to the Somalia, Somalia uh, issue. In May, we have conducted uh, another uh, event about the president. Some of you have attended those events. In the beginning, I, I would like to introduce Mrs. His Excellency Mr. Hassan. He uh, founded the Homeland Protectors under the leadership of Hassan Sheikh Mahmoud and they have formed an alliance for peace and development when in the elections after the elections of 2022 now he is the minister of the justice and constitutional affairs it is a difficult position because it talks about the constitution and building the constitution uh, he joined the political business after the interference of the ethiopian troops in the in uh, somalia he was a member of the political uh, and the political leadership of the Re Somalia Resilience, uh, and that was up till 2008. He started as a minister for presidential affairs and a parliament member in two consecutive sessions or terms. And this is very important, the experience of His Excellency as an MP. He will be talking about uh, for he will talk about 40 minutes, and after that we will open the floor for a round of questions and answers. Peace be upon you all. I would love center for inviting and welcoming me um, for this talk today to share my experience of the Somalia and that we want to see and come back into the world stage that is, has been absent. Uh, Somalia, known for its reputation as a failed state, and uh, all the other problems associated with the mystery, the refugees, the pirates, the terrorists, and, and how we are going to emerge from that rubble. And unique experience, I, I claim. Somalia has a, is a unique experience of its own. Uh, Baby, it has uh, some similarities, but I'm going to emphasize the differences. And, and I will conclude 
or a, for a successful one, and for that matter. And my team, they have prepared my, my talk in Arabic, so I will stick to that, although I'm not comfortable with it. And لأن أنا 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 كنت لم because uh, since a long time I have not practiced but um, the attempt to speak in Arabic will be enjoyable and fruitful. Now I am the Minister of Justice and Constitution Affairs in the Federal Somali Government and my mission is to spread the governance, the rule of law through building the organization, institutions and controlling the country and also to continue the march of the review of the Constitution that started in uh, 2012, before 12 years ago, and that constitution, now it is called the Provisional Constitution, constitution. This is, this is the, that attracts or absorbs or takes all the effort of the country as for combating terrorism and, and to spread the control and the, govern, govern the rule of the law and the country and to continue other political processes that uh, are required by the review of the constitution and building the other institutions of the country. And I think this is possible the problem of Somalia and this Obama stands behind the Somalia crisis and maybe its uh, root cause. The problem in Somal is uh, caused by the absence of the rule of law. The first Somalia Republic after it got its independence from the European colonizer in uh, 1960 and the state was built on a colonization legacy. Or what uh, that was uh, rejected by the community at that time. It was not our choice or our option. It was built from up and with the military power. And that is the, col the colonization exploitation of, of the colonized people, but building the state or a harmonious state with the local community was not here. The crisis was born. The difference between the state and the Somalia community because the community were not feel or the, it did not feel that the government is uh, close to the community, and this uh, problem came post-colonization. In this respect, well, the colonization uh, was not a good experience for the Somali people. In the period between uh, 1960 to 1969, the first uh, Somalia Republic the Somalia hold or held the constitutional system and there are internal and domestic factors brought about not good results. As for the Somalia community was feeling that it is what was absurd or was odd or alienated if or alienated from the government or the state. Yes, must vote, alienation. And on the other hand, the first priority of the Somalia people is to rectify the situation that uh, emerged because of the division. 
or by that the colonizers uh, created with Somalia was divided into different uh, states. The two of them were unified. Fourth, the Somalia desire to change the borders of Somalia states, the Somalia has no hand in that. The newborn republic felt that from the neighbor Ethiopia. We have not chosen that neighbor. That threat was uh, putting the newborn state regarding the sovereignty and the unity of land of this newborn uh, republic and the unity of the Somalia land. And it sought to annex the remaining land of Somalia to Ethiopia. Although Ethiopia participated with other European countries in taking some parts of the region. These borders are suffered by the Somalis, or, and the same thing now. So the core crisis with Ethiopia today is not different from the period of the 60s. Ethiopia wants to detect, uh, to take part of our land and to divide the republic and to uh, undermine our efforts where the uh, Somali government uh, fighting uh, terrorism and trying to draft a permanent constitution that ensures freedom, basic freedom of the citizens. We have achieved great achievements, actually, uh, uh, that we have the civilized charter or the urban charter among the states. After the failure of the state or the republic and its collapse, there was an embargo imposed in Somalia for reasons, and now it has been lifted for re other reasons. Uh, now also removing the debts of Somalia or and joining the group of the Eastern African eco uh, the economic East African group that uh, was done in within a period after the election of the new president Hassan Sheikh after that we have been on the right track and Ethiopia wants to take us back into the uh, square one. And this, uh, the world was going uh, through the fiercest cold war waves that did not allow all or some countries to penetrate or to leave the uh, colonization co countries and Somalia has become a place for competition between the two superpowers the United States and the USR at that time or the Soviet Union so Somalia felt the threat of Ethiopia uh, and that has led to give the give a priority to building the army with the help of the Soviet Union For that reason, or for the sake of that, the army was uh, built and it fluctuated and it coped against the re Republican system in 1919. The army and the officers canceled the constitution and they put the leaders into prisons in, in the prison 
and the military system prevailed and dominated the republic culturally and politically and economic wise and even at the level of the religious affairs with all of that the the policies the policies of the system has led into an economic collapse with the uh, military rule and the economic collapse paved the way for the birth of the military movements in the 80s of the previous century. This, in a way, justifies to the appearance of the military and armed militias. With the end of the Cold War, and uh, the need for the system, we entered the phase of the complete fail state failure. And uh, Somalia has become unable to impose its sovereignty on its land. And uh, in the, uh, according to the international law, it has become a failure state. And in 19, 2000, that is another chapter the Somalis started to rebuild their country or their republic through from the bottom up a reconcil uh, reconciliation the state is gone and the society remains the people come together well and you have and that is a unique experience. The war lords accredited or decided to reconcile in 2004 and they started a new, uh, they signed the end of the military works or actions this process took a long time and it diverted many times because of the political differences but despite the ethiopian interference and the appearance of the world terrorism in somalia the the entrance and the occupation of Ethiopia in 2006 and the appear and the bare appearance of the terrorist uh, movements in Somalia and this process and it's the terrorism is spread and the country suffered a chaotic situation with the absence of the rule of the country and do its control over the country or the republic. Now, there are two faces for the same coin. Now, we are facing a war of multi uh, dimensions with uh, different uh, pivots, uh, ideological and economic, financial, and military as well, and with this order, everything starts with an idea and ends with the power and the stick. We are building the institutions and for political reconstruction for the sake of the new constitution that ensures the division between the authorities, federal system, and the political process, democratic process so that we are able later on to empty or to engage with the development. All these guarantees start with a constitution that separates between the authorities and supports the federal system 
because the dictatorship and the previous dictatorship system in order to uh, build what we call a, a unity system and a centralized system. Therefore, Somali people, this side. Uh, as a result of their bitter experience. There are four leaders who were in the rule of the country and the current president was elected for the second term in uh, 2022 after uh, 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 he lost the elections in 2012. This means that there is a deliberation of the uh, power and uh, uh, peaceful deliberation power. And now uh, Somalia c can and a Somal Kadira we had a uh, Somalia was, was able to transfer power smoothly and peacefully for the past 20 years. And the, maybe this is what I have in 40 minutes. وأشكركم على حسن الاستماع. And waiting for your uh, question and answer mm -hmm. session. Shukran, Mari. Allow me only to summarize some of the points that you meant uh, or you spoke about uh, in the historical order. And we found that Ethiopia repeated many times and recently there is a, sign, a signing of a memorandum of understanding and there was a, a S Somalian government speaking in the uh, international uh, level and uh, there are visits and talks. So if we want to focus on this as a pers first part, uh, how would you see or how do you see the relationship with Ethiopia? Is it possible that uh, a military... Uh, progress will happen, is there alliances that might happen and the things that will not re be repeated or the things that happen would not be repeated? In my answer is as I haven't prepared them in advance. So you may excuse me. And Somalia and, and Ethiopia and have been for centuries been, been neighbors. They have been living side by side all those years. And, uh, and the latest and was as I said in my in my speech, it started with the birth of Somalia. The birth of Somalia in 1960. Ethiopia, uh, they were not happy uh, to see a Somali nation uh, on its side as an equal uh, nation. From there on, <clears throat> and Somalia as a result of that, uh, we made the choices of making alliances. Uh, some of those alliances, as I have said, uh, and, and the way we have managed them was not conducive uh, to the peace building. And the condition is, I explained, was in the Cold War and the height of the Cold War. So 
and that was something external to 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 both Somalia and Ethiopia. And I mean external, we were not in control as uh, these nations in uh, Somalia and uh, Ethiopia become, become themselves pawns in the play of these uh, superpowers. And, uh, and you know what they say about the spheres of influence and, uh, and the way that has played out was to the detriment of both and the two nations, neighboring nations. Yes, we blame the leadership of that time. And <clears throat> those who were not careful in how they use, how they have been used by the, by the big powers of the day. And, uh, and as a result of that, in Somalia, with the end of the Cold War, and because of the contradictions in its birth and the con something congenital to its birth, Somalia was not able to sustain itself after the end of the Cold War. And uh, as it was no longer and strategically important to anyone. And that in itself and indicates and the blame now I wanted is to say Somali state and its leaders were not in, in doing or they were not pursuing the right policies, whether they are political, social, or economic. As I have mentioned it in my speech, all of those and where were one after the other were destroyed, were destroyed. As a result, result of that, the state was failing and uh, consequently collapsed. And what happened since then was that Ethiopia has gone through the same military dictatorships, uh, Marxist ideology and all over the place and then go into war in 1977, what they call the Ogaden War. And uh, from there on, uh, because of the economic conditions and the political realities and their dependence on outside powers, they were not, uh, they are called quasi-states. They, they were not states as, as customarily known, and uh, that can exist on their own. But they were existing because of their dependence on others. Somalia fell through a net, and, uh, but since then what, what we have been observing was that because Somalia completely collapsed, and Ethiopia was trying to use uh, every means it can destabilize and or and continue uh, the, the, the fragmentation of the Somali people. So what happened was, uh, that was in the 1990s, but even after the Arta conference, that Somalia is co came together in a peace conference and they started to build their own nation from the scratch. And, uh, and uh, as I was making the distinction between the state and society. Society now, Somali society was now in a position to come together and build their own state that reflects their aspirations and their values. Again, Ethiopia continued its policies of undermining all these efforts until uh, they 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 invaded in, in, in the invasion of and the occupation of 2006. Again, what happened was that everybody took up arms 
and uh, uh, we fought them. And uh, this was a two years of occupation, and we know the end. We know the end. They have to withdraw and leave Somalia. And, and uh, that was, uh, we thought, that was the end of their uh, attempt to try to invade or destabilize Somalia. And I don't know what, why Abby in one morning, 1st of January, woke up and he decided to invite le the leader of the northern region is uh, Musa and claiming to sign the so-called memorandum of understanding. How you can sign a memorandum of, of understanding in an international law that is between states, sovereign nation states, how can you sign with region? It's a, and I think that was a dangerous, that was reckless. Uh, yes, you said Somalia is seeking support uh, and solidarity from the rest of the world. Yes, we did that, we embarked. And uh, diplomacy is the first port of call and we did that successfully. And now, as a result of that, and Ethiopia now, in that aspect, feels isolated diplomatically. And the international community, uh, the African continent, starting with the African continent, the Arab, the United Nations, all they have made their statements clear. Ethiopia to respect uh, the territorial integrity and the political independence of Somalia. Uh, the, the world recognizes Somalia. The world does not recognize a region. And, and that in itself uh, can create a precedent uh, if uh, one nation tries to ignore that norm. It's a principle, international law. To, to ignore that norm and uh, embark or, or try uh, to, to say, I want to sign an agreement with the region within a state that you are a supposed to respect and not interfere. Yes, Somalia responded diplomatically in the first instance, and uh, we are ready to respond in any shape or form that we deem necessary. Shukran, Malik. Your Excellency, Dr. Ibrahim, microphone, please. Thank you for this uh, excellent uh, points that you made on the situation in Somalia. We learned a lot. We appreciate that. Uh, my question is uh, regarding Al Shabab. Has there been, uh, is there dialogue? What's, it's, the question is, what's the end of the story with the Shabab? <coughs> is there a dialogue that's happening with them? Has there been dialogue with them before? As you know, Your Excellency, uh, all security solutions uh, with rebel groups everywhere, they all failed. And they emerged, they re-emerged in different shape and form and all of that because there have been no political solutions with them. So is the situation in Somalia is different with the Shabab uh, that you're trying to approach it in a different approach other than strictly security approach? Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the Center of uh, Conflict Resolution and uh, thank you, Your Excellency, for coming. My question is the, uh, draft about the drafting of the permanent constitution for Somalia. As you mentioned, uh, the drafting of the constitution took until now 12 years and maybe it will be more than that. Do you think that uh, it would be better to have a national uh, 
reconciliation and uh, dialogue. According to its outputs, we will do the drafting of the permanent constitution as it represents and redefined a new social uh, era after the defragmentation of the country. Peace be upon you. My name is Fahd Ahmed. Uh, I am uh, the, in charge of public relations from the uh, uh, Somalian community here uh, in Qatar. Thank you, Dr. Ayham. Ayham, thank you, Your Excellency. I have two strands in my question. As you said, that uh, the uh, base pro uh, or the basic problem is that there is no uh, law enforcement, uh, if I could uh, uh, understand properly. Uh, God help you. You are uh, in the justice and the constitution. I w uh, so what are the barriers that will hinder the possibility of the government to implement the, the law on everybody and enforce the law on everybody? The second uh, question, uh, the President Hassan Sheikh in Roma recently in one interview is related to Ethiopia, he said that there are countries, uh, Ethiopia is not alone. So there are countries behind the curtains that push Ethiopia to uh, uh, attack or to deal with uh, Somalia in this way, in an uh, illegal way. Why don't the Somalia government uh, look at the root causes other than the symptoms that they are dealing with? Thank you very much. Shukran Jazilan. The pertin pertinent question is, uh, and uh, which are relevant and valid. Uh, if I may not have the captured the names, you may excuse me. Uh, Al Shabab and uh, in, in political negotiations. How do we settle? and the dispute and the conflict between the federal government of Somalia and Al-Shabaab. Uh, um, and uh, have you ever attempted uh, one in that regard? Um, in, in, in my knowledge, um, um, Al-Shabaab, um, my uh, knowledge of them, and they are not for Somalia. They are not there for Somalia. Their political uh, lexicon, uh, political project, it does not uh, include or are not limited by the Somalia experience. They are, we know, they are affiliates of Al-Qaeda, and they have paid allegiance, bay'ah, uh, uh, Al-Qaeda. And they represent them in Somalia. So uh, I could flip the question. Uh, we, if we could speak to uh, the, the, the branch, which is a branch here, uh, which is Al-Shabaab, Farah. Uh, why can't, can't we speak to Al-Qaeda, uh, the godfather themselves? And, you know, because their agenda is global. And uh, Somalia is a nation state and, and recognized as such. And uh, until, and as of now, and we have been following, they are, they are thinking and if they have made any, any revisions of their uh, political thoughts. And, and they haven't done that. They haven't done that. Uh, they are still stick to the instructions of the talimat that come from those. Then, how can we can separate and the head from the rest of the body. They are uh, 
and part and parcel of the same. And, but I, the sentiment you have expressed, which is a negotiation and a dialogue and in itself, is worth trying. And, but you have to know your enemy, where they are. Uh, we are testing, and we have been testing them for far long since their, their emergence. And they haven't, and they haven't actually changed it. They are, they are, their methods, they haven't changed their ideology, and, uh, and we know that, we know that. And, uh, and I think dialogue is the, is the least expensive of all efforts, dialogue. I would have opt, opted for that path if it was open and, 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 and possible. But I, I don't think uh, until uh, we, they are forced to come to the table. Uh, sometimes, not only sometimes, generally speaking, uh, where these kinds of conflicts have been, have been resolved, it has been through degrading your enemy and until they accept, until they accept the framework which is Somalia. Uh, we have no intention and uh, beyond uh, Somalia and we have no reach beyond Somalia. And, uh, and, and we know what they want and what they would, we know they are. Uh, 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 delusional dreams, we know that, and uh, so if they accept that, we are willing to talk. So there are, there, these are the conditions, and we are uh, trying to find out, to, to, to get the signals, and if we see them, we are the first to seize the moment. <coughs> Jibril, Somali. Yeah. Uh, Somali. And, and the constitution of Tolaf here is why don't we go through instead of doing uh, the stour, why don't we go through reconciliation, the peace conferences, the traditional, and and then come to social contract. Yeah, I, I, I'm trying to be and uh, stick to your. Then I'm, I'm translating at my best. And I, I, my, my brother, it's uh, you cannot separate uh, reconciliation and constitution. They are one and the same. When we are saying Siagat does the store, constitutional making process in itself is a part and parcel of reconciliation. I'm going, I'm going to give you an, ex, ex, an, ex, an, an, an example of what happened. Was that the past 12 years, there was this constitutional review process. Because this, this constitution we have right now is a muakat. And, and, and so we have embarked on a, on, a, on a process to review it for the past 12 years. That has been done. The Somali people, they have been reviewing it in their own ways. And until now, we are doing that. So what has changed was the political will of the leadership now. Before, it was only rhetorical. Now, this government has decided to complete our constitution. We cannot have an incomplete constitution. Because we know the inherent problem is of not having an incomplete constitution. And last time, we almost were on the brink of a civil war. Why? Because the last president tried to extend his term. He was making all kinds of claims and arguments and, 
and loopholes that you could find. So sometimes there are an uh, inherent uh, contradictions uh, in our current provisional constitution. So we need to sort that out uh, once and for all. And uh, that is why we, uh, the president of the, of the republic has convened a high level uh, meeting between the federal member states and the federal government of Somalia. And they convened for the simple uh, objective of uh, agreeing on the most contentious issues that was remaining. All that issues have been resolved through the constitutional review process of Talia's. But now the heads, I mean, the leaders, uh, they came together and only uh, just 16 months ago, they came together and they have agreed to, to resolve that. So they have agreed on, the, on those issues and the technical aspects have been done before and now the political and, and aspects have been done. What is remaining was to, to take our constitution, the proposed constitutional amendments or changes have been taken to the parliament as has been stipulated in our current constitution. And now, for the first time in 60 years, our parliament is debating. Is debating our constitution. That is the whole exercise and the national debate is on our constitution. So this in itself means for the first time, we are restoring our constitutional order that has been destroyed or disrupted in 1969. So I, I mean, this is, that's why I call it historic. So we cannot delay it any further and, or any longer necessary. And, and, it, and this, when this constitution is completed and uh, the parliament has, has debated, then it will continue to be taken to the people for a vote in a referendum, now it, because they have the final say. So that is the process, and, uh, and that is what I was trying to say uh, when I was referring to Tajruba uh, Farida Minnoiha, as we are building our nation from the bottom up. Uh, Somali people are building their state not as be, has been imposed by the colonialists and, uh, and, and Somalis will be and, and happy with what they have built and designed in their own way and they wished for. And Uh huh. That is. Uh huh. And the challenges. Yeah. And what he was talking about. <clears throat> yes. Uh, this is again a pertinent and relevant, uh, valid question, which is why the state is not able to extend and expand its authority. And why? Why not? Yes, as I said before, we are simultaneously uh, completing our constitution, and at the same time, we are extending the authority of the state through the agreement we have, and eliminating or eradicating Al-Shabaab. Al-Shabaab, as you may know, as I said in my speech, they have taken advantage of the vacuum that was created after the collapse, uh, and the absence is of the central authority. They have taken advantage of that and they have entrenched themselves in, in there. So we are 
ishtithath. We are removing them, we are uprooting them uh, because they have been holding in, in these territories for far too long. And, uh, and that is one of the challenges. That is one of the challenges we, are, uh, uh, we have impact on. And that is the policy we have chosen. Defeating Al-Shabaab and uh, also on the same time, completing our constitution are, are the two sides. Cons completing our constitution is on one side of reconciling our society. Our society. That is, we are, this is a process. It will take maybe a, a, a bit long time, but it is worth trying and doing it right now. Uh, the challenges are, are huge. Some I have said to do with external interferences, as I have just referred to them. Now we are trying to bring on board Somaliland. Uh, the neighboring country intervenes, uh, disrupts the whole process. And, and that's what they were doing uh, to keep Somalia fragmented. That's the objective. Yes, are we up to the challenge? Yes, we are up to the challenge. And you said the president uh, made a reference uh, to, to in his speech in Rome, and you said about some countries are supporting Ethiopia. Have you said that? Mm -hmm. Who are those countries and what Somali government has to take action against them if they are well known? Otherwise, the president will be taken seriously. Okay, and you know, if you bow the lahayin in politics and in diplomacy, you don't point fingers. You don't point fingers. So uh, those who know, know. And so our president is not obliged to come forward and say that country is inter intervening. No, that's undiplomatic, and that has a consequence. But uh, what he said was uh, Ethiopia, as you said, elegantly and eloquently, as you said, Ethiopia on its own dare not do what it did uh, on its own. And that is, I think, uh, uh, time will tell. Time will tell, but the president was putting that out for others to find on their own. And, and uh, when, they, when they expose themselves, and that will, they will make our job easier for us, and I hope and we wish uh, those that have been pointed out and, and because at the end of the day, when their actions speak, we will, we will say who they are. When their actions speak, we will say who they are. But we hope before that they, they desist and they refrain, stop from what they are doing. And I think that was the objective of what the, why the president was calling out some people and not mentioning names. Come back. Assalamu alaikum. Anwar al Khatib, I'm from the Arab Jadid. I'm from the Arab Jadid, Muhammad al Khatib. I have a question, Your Excellency, for uh, on the agreement that you signed with Turkey for military cooperation. Do you think that the agreement with uh, Turkey will prevent the development of the conflict between Somalia and uh, Ethiopia into a military conflict? Um, Hussam, a student in Doha Institute, we would like to thank the Conflict Center and the Humanitarian Aid 
and thank you, Your Excellency, for being here uh, with us. Uh, my question relates to the title. You are talking about the Third Republic. Oh, uh, uh, did this mean that there is a failure on part of the Second Republic or there is a development of the Second Republic? So, and if that is not true, what are the main features of the, main, of the Rep Third Republic which are different from the Second Republic? What are the most prominent features of the Third Republic? لا نسمعك هل هناك تمييز ضدي thank you your your excellency thank you i will address a topic which is a bit different the issue of somalia the environment and the climatic change does the government take that into consideration? For example, there are studies talking about that most uh, most, most of the, the tribal conflict, 30 to 40 percent for water and water scarcity and the agricultural land. There are studies also of, uh, with the 1,080, the share of the uh, individual will drop down by half other uh, uh, maybe 43,000 people died because of a drought are there core reasons also doesn't you th don't you think that the government if it tackles the issue of the climatic conditions will contribute to reduce uh, maybe or assist the government to reduce the civil conflicts Uh, and I am a senior research fellow at the Center for Conflict and Humanitarian Studies. You have painted for us a very optimistic f picture uh, about uh, the recent developments in Somalia in a way. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, my questions might uh, uh, temper that uh, optimism a little bit. Uh, on the Ash-Shabaab insurgency, we know that uh, uh, President Hassan Sheikh Mahmoud, shortly after coming to power, he launched or revitalized the counterinsurgency campaign. And uh, the uh, new counterinsurgency campaign also took into consideration uh, drying out the Ash-Shabaab financing. There was also one component had to do with an ideological war in addition uh, to the security element. And uh, the president declared that uh, the goal of the uh, counterinsurgency campaign is to end Al Shabaab once and for all. Yet now it has been maybe a little bit more than a year, about a year and a half since that campaign started. And Al Shabaab are still active and they retain the capacity to even. Uh, conduct operations inside Mogadishu. Although my understanding is that a lot of the counterinsurgency activity took place in areas around Mogadishu to secure the capital. Uh, there were some uh, concerns about the capacity of the, of the Somali security forces to generate enough force to take the fight into new areas and apparently uh, uh, these concerns still stand. And these will have also implications on the uh, transition and the implementation of the security transition plan, the transition to the, uh, of security respo responsibilities to the Somali security forces. On the democratic uh, experience uh, in Somalia, no democratic experience in any country, whether it's in Somalia or elsewhere, would be complete without a finalized and a complete constitution. The constitutional review process, as you rightly said, 
has been in the making now for 12 years, although constitutionally, according to the provisional constitution, it was supposed to take only four years. Four years. It was supposed to be finalized during the, first, uh, the term of the first parliament. The timelines have not been kept, and the former president Farmajo, Muhammad Abdullah Farmajo, deferred the process uh, to the a new parliament because the contentious issues mainly between the federal government of Somalia and the federal member states could not be resolved. Now, I understand there have been some agreements and you referred to some of them, but I haven't seen at least in the news anything rela that relates to the weighty contentious issues. I mean, there was an agreement on the judiciary, there was an agreement on the electoral framework and universal suffrage and some other issues, but I haven't seen anything on uh, power sharing or you know, wealth sharing and issues like that. So what contentious issues are still holding the process, if you can shed light uh, on that? And on Somaliland, again, for the last uh, 10 or 12 years since the talks in Istanbul, nothing happened. And you referred to an effort by President Hassan Sheikh Mahmoud to uh, restart uh, the process or the discussions or the talks with uh, Somaliland. If you can tell us a little bit more about that, I would be really interested to know about it. Thank you very much. Sorry, I've been overwhelmed by the last speaker. Uh, so I was taking my notes carefully. And uh, <coughs> thank you very much again. Yes. Uh, we are dealing with. And uh, we are not hiding them. We are not hiding them. And the only way they could be resolved is to bring them out. And uh, we are trying to be transparent and open about them. So sometimes our wounds or our uh, frailties and vulnerabilities and could be seen. And so I go to the first speaker and his question was with regard this to the MOU and Somalia and Turkey have signed. And, uh, and that will, his question was about w w uh, if this will stop Ethiopia and, uh, from continuing in its own uh, aggression and, or provocation is that I think that was the question of the first. Is uh, <coughs> and we don't know if the if they and if they will take a note of that. And Somalia, as I said before, we were engaged on only one enemy, and that was defeating and uh, eliminating Al Shabaab. And uh, we were engaged with that with that enemy, and we were making gains. And, and successes on them, and uh, the, the the disruptive and the, uh, the provocative uh, statements or so-called MOUs only emboldens Al Shabaab's rhetorical to recruit and 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 the young people, the gullible young people, and uh, and I and I. And that was maybe they knew that was the goal for them to to get Al Shabaab, and because in our view, these two, as I said before, wajhani al umlatin wahida. They are and, and they reinforce each other. If you find one, you find the other, and. And uh, we can we can say that loudly and clearly now, and uh, without hesitation. 
And so I don't know if this will stop Ethiopia, but Somalia and sought support from so many friends and uh, Turkey came forward and with this uh, agreement, which is basically to build uh, the capacity and the capabilities of the Somali securities to defend and protect their own territory. That's basically what it is. And, and the agreement is, does not, and, or it's not about and, and Turkey is in alliance and to, with, with Somalia to, to, to invade or, or attack in Ethiopia. But this bill is the capacity and the capability of Somalia to, to defend its territory. And so any violation uh, that comes and will be responded. And, and this, uh, we say it very clearly, we will respond to them and, uh, and uh, we have done that before and we'll do it again. We'll do it again. And, and I hope, and I repeat, and they come back to their senses and refrain from any acts that endangers and jeopardizes the peace of that region. And Jamhuriyatu Athalitha and Mahia Abrazul Malamihaha and Jamhuriyatu Athalitha, as I said before, is just uh, in, a, in a nutshell is to restore, as I said, the constitutional order. Jamhuriyatul Awal yani kanat ta'mal kanat yani and there's a constitution that constitution was suspended as I said before, it was suspended so everything that followed was the uh, until the demise of, of, the, of the state was, was a result of the, of, the, of the suspension of that constitution and now the whole exercise is about to restore the constitutional order so that here had abriz malamih and to reestablish uh, the rule of law, Dulatul Qanun, or Siyatul Qanun, which has been absent. And so that means uh, Somalis that are at peace with themselves. When you have a constitution, and uh, that means equality before the law, and, and that means Hunaka uh, and yani, liberties and the rights of the citizens are protected by the constitution and and uh, and that means a sovereignty externally you cannot have a sovereignty uh, at the external level you have to have your people to be sovereign and to be citizens and and i make the argument and i repeat again and, I've, and i have made so many times and the sovereignty of the people is essential component of the sovereignty of the nation, of the state. And تغير المناخ ودراسات yes, environmental changes and the climate change, I agree with you, is significantly impact this and peace and war and uh, so the challenges are there, the pressure and on the people and to migrate. Uh, sometimes the famine we are having, and which has been recurring, uh, which is come with, a, has been said in the studies, it is to do with the climate change. And for the first time, I can say to you, uh, a ministry for that both portfolio has been established. And, 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 and I uh, think that means, and for this, maybe this 
as I say, ameliorates the, the, the impact of, 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 of climate change. And now we are taking uh, measures, preventative measures, how we can prevent it. How can, how can we reduce or ameliorate the, 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 the impact of it? People are migrating because of the climate change. Uh, people are displaced because of the, and that can cause conflict again. And that the whole cycle uh, will start all over again. So I agree with you, and uh, I think this government has given a, a priority to this, as has been evidenced uh, for the establishment of a, a ministry, which is a, a with a big portfolio, and has a and has a a, a lady as the minister, uh, because mothers are always close to the earth, as they call earth is a mother itself. And so in that, I, I live and on that positive note, and, and I tend to be my friend, and who started, you have been sounding optimistic about Somalia, I have to be optimistic about Somalia, and, but I am not delusional. We are facing uh, challenges, I said. We are realistic. We are realistic at the challenges we are facing. And, uh, and the insurgency, and as you said, Al-Shabaab, we call their name. They are terrorist organization. They are not any insurgency. And uh, they have been weakened. They have been degraded, and that uh, that, that was the point. Uh, yes, a year has, has, has since gone, but and, and it was worth the while. It was worth trying, and now we have seen the fruits. We have seen the fruits and of that because, we, as you said, rightly so, in Mogadishu, we don't see explosions that have taken the lives of so many people. Why? Because we are taking the fight to the enemy now. In, in the past, it was, before this new government, it was only we were in defensive mode. In Mogadishu, in the bunkers. So the government, now we have come out of our comfort zones. As the ministries, we and the, and, the, and the president, the president is the leader, the commander. As the ministries, we go to the front lines for the first time. And we go to the front lines, and now they know our, uh, we, they know our intention is to finish them off. And, uh, and uh, that is a big change. That is a big change. We are not hunkering down in Mogadishu. This has been the case before. So everything starts with the will. How and when we will finish this enemy and, and uh, how many cycles are remaining, yes, that we leave it to, 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 to the time to tell. But we are committed to finish them off. Uh, that is the bottom line. That is the bottom line. The campaign started. The, the, the terrorists are now, uh, now uh, and, and standing on their last legs. And uh, we know and they have, and we are hearing reports of them uh, now sometimes trying to say, uh, preparing the escape routes. And, uh, and, and I think um, with, the, with, the, with this new agreement between Turkey uh, on the defense and from the sea in itself will have, a, 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 which has been absent in the past, will have a positive um, a effect on them because now the escape routes and the supply routes has to be cut, whether it's the land or the sea. Yes, <coughs> the concerns are there. And and <clears throat> but I don't agree with you when you said and the enemy, they have retained their capacity. No, 
their capacity has and their capabilities have been reduced significantly. And uh, and the atmis, uh, the draw, the drawdown of atmis, uh, the, the the African Union, uh, is keeping troops. That in itself is an evidence that we are we are taking over, and they are transferring some of the responsibilities to the Somali government. That has, should have been an, in itself an indication that we are weakening the enemy and we are in a position to, to take our responsibilities. And the drawdown and the withdrawal of the at Atmis are, are going and according, according to plan. So we should be applauded for that, applauded for that, and never to be discouraged. A uh, democratic experience, <coughs> <coughs> and you're right when you said your first statement uh, without finalizing your constitution, and that's the goal. Uh, the whole exercise is to finalize and complete our, our constitution. And it was supposed, to, as you rightly said, in the first term of the first parliament, you're right about that. These are facts. Yes, I was member of that parliament. They haven't discharged their, their duties. Yes, and now we blame them, those who were there. Yes, uh, the time limits haven't been kept. You're right about that for 12 years. Uh, but the question is why I'm so optimistic? Because uh, the, the, what have started now is, is different from what it was before. I said our constitution for the first time is at the parliament now. Parliament's debating it. So that is a milestone. And you haven't mentioned it, my friend. And, uh, and we haven't been there. And the first four chapters uh, will be done before, the, before this session is out. Uh, in Ramadan, during Ramadan, inshallah, it will be done. And, and there will be, the rest will be done by the end of the year, inshallah. And you said some of the contentious issues have not been, have not been agreed upon. And they are nine, there were nine, some of the, that has been identified as a con con contentious issues. And I can and enumerate them. And Six of them have been agreed. Three are remaining. And that's why we have started, because when you have, two, that means two thirds, that means two thirds of the contentious issues, there are politic, the political agreement has been done by the National Consultative Council. And since then they have submitted, we have submitted that to parliament. That's why they have started debating and that is, is a fact. And that's the figures I'm giving you. So there are uh, grounds for being optimist about Somalia. And uh, we should all be optimist. The, the final uh, question was the Somaliland talks. A little bit about that. We'll say another speaker. Yeah. Ah, I saw it, sorry. And Somaliland talks, and you know, and Somaliland and Somalia talks, they as, as, be, as, be, as can be seen, and Somaliland has been dealt separately from the rest of the Somalia. And for reasons, for reasons. And, and, uh, and there were talks, separate talks, have been, that have been held in other capitals for the last 10 years. In London, in Istanbul, in Djibouti, in so many other places have been held. And yes, and some uh, issues, not substantive, not substantive, I may say, 
have read, ag agreed upon. And, but the Moses substantive, which is the final, um, has not been agreed upon. And this was the time and the signal is we were getting um, from Moses, the leader of that region, was positive. That is why the president and his, and, and his delegation went to Djibouti. And, uh, and, and the, this was, an, an was convened an, by none other and Djibouti president, our brother, Ismail Omar Geli, who has, as I said, started 20 something years ago. We are where we have held our successful peace conference, which has produced the current government of Somalia in 2000. So maybe this was his last wish, but this, it was not meant to be this time around as uh, Abby has sabotaged so Abby has sabotaged this effort and we the, 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 the what we were getting the messages we were getting were, were positive and Mose was willing now to uh, talk about and go into a meaningful uh, discussions on the substantive issues and but all of that now have been uh, uh, torpedoed by, by, by Abby, the Ethiopian Prime Minister. Uh, and that's why we were making the case. And, and our problem is, as I said, we're not all internal. And they have never been all internal or domestic. There were some of them, or most of them, were were external, mainly, mainly to do with Ethiopia. So, and we will continue, and we will continue uh, to be optimistic. We will continue talking to the Somali partners, and uh, we can resolve our issues through dialogue and, and peace building and trust building, and uh, maybe the journey uh, will take, will make twists here and there, and, but we see the end and we are committed to completing the, 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 the journey. So uh, again, I may say, I remain, I remain uh, optimistic about Somalia and because what is we are doing and, and making the right policies and, uh, and making the right choices and uh, you know your priorities and, uh, and you have the right partners sometimes and this, uh, this wall is not bleak, it's not gloomy as has been evidenced in so many, so many countries and come to the aid, come to our aid, come to our side, and we are very grateful uh, for that. Diplomatically, some of them have shown uh, and their words with deeds, and uh, we are we are grateful to that. And Somalia, that means Somalia is not alone, and that's why we are optimistic about our future. Thank you very much. It's uh, uh, good uh, with this. Uh, it is good to be this evening with this optimism about some of the conflict uh, issues in the Arab world. That is a unique experience with a local manufacturing if in Somal, and it, we hope that it will be inspiring for other other uh, Arab countries that are suffering. Thank you, Your Excellency. We have benefited from your. Uh, a speech, uh, and also we would like to thank all the participants, and we would like also to thank the participants, the commentators, and the translation team.